Morning, friends. Welcome to worship. This first Sunday in the season of creation. Our call to worship is found on the overhead. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, riding mountain and all hills, valleys and rivers, willows and poplars. Queens and kings of the earth and all peoples, princesses, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Our opening hymn, which of course I must remind you we are going to be uh, listening to or humming along to. We must refrain from singing, I'm afraid. Our opening hymn is from Voices United, number 217, and Common Praise, number 355, All Creatures of Our God and King. Thank you, Carolyn. We welcome those of you who join us from afar here this morning to the Nipawa United Anglican Shared Ministry Service, coming to you from Nipawa, Manitoba, Canada. It is a delight and an honor for us to be welcomed into your homes or wherever you may be watching along. For our service of light, Linda and Jackie are going to light our Paschal Christ candle.
Let us pray. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we see the glory of the sun and our eyes behold its beautiful light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be sung by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Thank you. Nothing like a license to play with fire in church. <laughs> with our first Sunday of creation being upon us, for the next five Sundays we will be celebrating this period in the life of the church's year. We're going to be pouring grains each week as we do in Advent to mark the Sundays, the season of creation. Here in God's bread basket to the world, our beloved Canadian prairies, seeds, grains, and pulse crops are all around us, reminding us that our farmers here in this place feed all of humanity. As we pour out this wheat today, let us give thanks to God for the abundant love shown to us in creation. And I would invite you to respond as found on the overhead. As these crops feed the world, may we too be fed in body, mind, and spirit, so that we may help to pour out God's love. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. We take just a moment of silence to collect our hearts. Together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And we say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and praise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. All that today you would hearken to his voice. Amen. I would invite Jackie to read our scripture lessons this morning. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4b to 22. These are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no one to till the ground but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 139, and it is on the screen. It will say it by the half verse, verses 13 to 16. And we will say the prayer at the end together. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day when as yet there was none of them. God of mystery and power, even our minds and hearts are the veils and signs of your presence. 
We come in silent wonder to learn the way of simplicity, the eternal road that leads to love for you and for your whole creation. We come as your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, and in his name, amen. The second reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 28. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortal life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jackie. Our gradual hymn is taken from more voices, number 135, called by earth and sky.
for the reading of the gospel. I would extend an invitation for you, if you are willing and able, to stand. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can I believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us bow our heads to pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in thy sight, dear Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. May only your truth be spoken here, God, and only your truth heard in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Arguably one of the most famous pieces of our holy scripture. Show of hands. Anyone have this or has had this hanging in their home at one point? Yeah, you can probably see it. If you don't have it hanging in your home, you can probably imagine that print, you know, that was very widespread. I don't know who it was put out by, but nearly every Christian of every denomination has had this hanging either in needlepoint or lithograph or some sort of print upon the wall in their homes. In my grandparents' house, there was one in the kitchen and also one in the upstairs hallway, which by this, you might presume that we were very religious people, always believers, but let me tell you, was lucky if we darkened the door of the church in Shoal Lake once or twice a year. Christmas and Easter, maybe. You know how it goes. They were cattle farmers, 500 head of cattle, a couple thousand acres to support those cattle. And as you know, on the farm, work is never done. And so we always had ample excuse not to go to church on Sunday. Well, the cows need checking, or fences need mending, or, you know, maybe we just need to do something that means we aren't going into town for church this morning. One of my grandfather's most beloved sayings was not this from John 3.16, but rather... Everyone likes the roast beef. Nobody likes to feed the cows. 
Everybody likes the fire. Nobody likes to put up the firewood. Everybody likes the raspberries in the freezer. Nobody likes to pick the berries. He managed to use this saying in a, a number of contexts to guilt us into helping him do something on the farm. And in all honesty, this saying applies quite directly to our church these days. Not just us here in Nipah United Anglican Shared Ministry, but the church, universal. For a number of years, mainline churches especially, don't even know if we can use that term anymore, mainline, have been in decline. You know it, I know it. Although this which we are doing here in Nipawa as Anglicans and Uniteds coming together is absolutely excellent, God-led and inspired, let's face it, if we were as strong as we were 50 years ago, we wouldn't be together here. There's no way. We'd be in our small corner and you and yours, you know the song, how it goes. It's because as Christians, especially as Christians in a first world country, or in Canada, we have had it so very good for so very long, really since the Second World War, we have drifted into this realm of, you know, wanting to be called Christians, maybe. Some don't even care about that anymore. Some of us want to be referred to as a certain kind of Christian, Anglican, United, Catholic, Pentecostal. But most of us, most of the faithful, don't want to put in the work. Everyone wants to be called a Christian. No one wants to put in the work. Granddad's saying works here too. And remember, this is not a guilt thing from me to you. Remember, I've shared with you very candidly the family from which I come. You know, marginal church attenders. About as religious as we got was having that John 3.16 on the, on the wall. This is not a guilt thing, but rather a truth thing. The hard work of being Christian is not popular today. I'm not even sure how fond of it I am. And that is not what I am up here to tell you. That is not what I'm supposed to say. The hard work of being the church is just that. It's hard work every single day. And so it is easier for us as Christians to kind of take a, a lukewarm approach, to sit on the fence, to be mediocre in our faith lives. That's the popular approach. We even see it in Scripture with Nicodemus and Jesus. Nicodemus is a ruler of the Jews, a Pharisee. And yet, he's curious. He wants to know more about this Jesus, about this new religion, this new faith. He's feeling drawn by God towards this new truth. And yet, in doing so, he's risking everything. Risking all that he knows, all that he holds dear, his position, his religion, his family. And so he comes in very tentatively, very lukewarm, very mediocre. I am a Jew, but what is this? I want to know more. And so Jesus challenges Nicodemus. He shares with him some of the tenets of the Christian faith about new birth, new birth and baptism and challenges him that he doesn't even know what he should know about his own religion, that he is 
I'm sort of lukewarm, mediocre. Now as a Pharisee, as an upholder of the Jewish law, Nicodemus would have been justified in remaining as just what he was, as mediocre, lukewarm. But Jesus dropped a truth on Nicodemus that changed everything. That took Nicodemus from this realm of wishy-washy to stepping up to a place where he defended Christ in later days. In front of thousands. Not only that, but he helped to bury Christ, risking everything, risking being thrown in prison. What changed it for Nicodemus? What made him stand up and take this faith that is ours seriously? That little verse that hangs upon countless kitchen walls. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in Jesus will not die, but live forever. My friends, this is a call to us as the Christians in the pews it is a call to us to step up, to do the work. Not that that work is going to save us or others. Jesus has already taken care of that. But as a response to these words from God, this truth. Remember, this is a personal faith. This is a promise that touches each of us because death is a part of living. We have all here lost beloved people who are a part of our blood and bones whom we cannot, could not imagine living without. And these words from Jesus remind us that this faith is not mediocre, it is not wishy-washy or lukewarm. The promises we have been handed are real and true, and those promises are this, that we will see those beloved of ours again because of the blood of Christ. If you don't believe in any other part of Christianity, all the candles and the words and the singing and the pews and whatever. Believe in this. Connect with this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that we who may believe in him will not die but have eternal life. And see those whom we love again. And if this isn't enough to make us stand up and take hold of our faith in a real way and do the hard work of sharing it as frightening as that is, I don't know what will move us from our complacency as the church, myself included. I pray that we will hear those words meant for Nicodemus and that we will make the leap just as Nicodemus did into a faith, a Christianity that is real and living, that is powerful and true, one that changes not only the lives of those around us, but ours. Amen. In response to our words from Scripture, we have our confession of faith. Apostles' Creed this morning, once again, as you are willing and only as you're able, I invite you to stand. 
Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as the offering is presented. Holy God, accept all we offer you this day. May we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. I would ask Jackie to lead our prayers this morning. In response to Lord in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. In a time of creation awareness, uh, creation awareness, we pause to give thanks for the wonders that surround us. We celebrate the blessings of earth nestled like a speck of dust in the great universe and at the same time home to life and beauty. From the amoeba to the antelope, from tiny seed to great trees, from newborn infant to wise elder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lament the desecration of the sacred gifts, the impact we and our habits have on earth and environment. We mourn the species now extinct from overhunting or loss of habitat. Move us to repent of our ways and live in harmony with earth, our mother, and sun and moon, stars and galaxies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the breath of life and pray that we may use our breath our voices and our lives to stand in solidarity with those places and peoples under threat or siege due to climate change or any other violence. Strengthen us to keep solidarity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, we turn back to our own circles and community, rejoicing at the love of friends family and congregation and at the same time calling to mind all who cannot be in this family today and those who are in any particular need. Keep us in communion with the sick, the dying and the bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless, O Holy One, our prayers and our intentions, that they may be added to the mending of the world. Amen. Amen. And our collect for this first Sunday in the season of creation. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love 
that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering all of our prayers and praises into one, we pray together as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. For our minute for mission this morning, we have a narrative entitled National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering 2019. Our gifts for mission and service support the important work of reconciliation with Indigenous members of the United Church of Canada. One of the programs mission and service supports is the National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering. Many Indigenous members met on the territory of the Chippewas and Rama near Aurelia, Ontario in August 2019 to discern and decide on the structure and priorities for the self-determining Indigenous Church within the United Church. This fourth National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering provided opportunities for listening to and discerning the Creator's plan, visioning spiritual nurture, mutual accountability, inspiration, education, youth development, and the expressing of the voice of the Indigenous community on spirituality and ministry. Using the Beda Bin, which means a first light of a new day process of education, reflection and discussion, discernment and decision making, participants created and named a new National Indigenous Church organization elected a new National Indigenous Council, appointed a National Elders Council, and set priorities for the next triennium. The National Indigenous Council is an intergenerational group that includes two youth leaders. As the planning team declared in its vision statement, the gathering would inform, transform, and manifest healing and vitality. This is our act of decolonizing. This vision and the decision made at the gathering will help the Indigenous Church to speak with a strong voice as its members continue to live into the right relations. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbour is at the heart of our mission and service. Just a couple of announcements. Next Sunday, we have the joy of welcoming a new family into our midst as members of the United Church, uh, Don and Michelle Walmsley. They will be welcomed next Sunday uh, through Affirmation of Faith. And so I would invite you to pray for them in the coming week as they prepare to do so. And also, when you see them, congratulate them and uh, Let's make them feel so welcome as I know you will. So we look forward to that. Also coming up, the first Sunday in October will be our first combined ecumenical communion service. Um, it will look different for both sides of the house, but most uh, especially because of COVID. And so I would invite your prayers for that worship service as we prepare it and plan it and uh, walk ever nearer to it. That's um, going to be the 4th of October. 
and so we look forward to communing with one another uh, in that very real and tangible way where all health restrictions uh, and safeties will be taken. Any other announcements that we know of, folks? No birthdays this week? If there are, you're not saying. We give thanks for this time of worship together. Last week, I was keeping Cliff on his toes. I told him I was going to let him out first, and then I let the front row out first. Some of you may remember that. Yes, what the mouth is saying isn't necessarily what the brain is thinking. Um, I wish I could say it was just to keep Cliff on his toes, but I really just forgot what I had said. So this week, <laughs> this week we are going to attempt to do this the proper way. Um, I'm going to let the folks at the back out first. So folks at the front, we beg your patience. Unless, of course, I mix it up again and you get to go out first as a surprise. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped us enter the church, our ushers and those who are helping us uphold health precautions. Thank you to Carolyn and to Jackie and to um, all of those who have made this service of worship possible. And to those of you at home watching on NAC TV or Bell Network on the Facebook page or on our YouTube channel, we give thanks for your presence with us and for your prayers. It's been an honor worshiping with you. We conclude our time of worship with Voices United number 291, Common Praise 415, All Things Bright and Beautiful. <laughs> 